How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday on this show. You know what that means. Hey, NXT 2.0 is tonight. My favorite show. But anyway, we're not going to talk about a lot of that today. But we will talk about the Raw show from last night. <laughs> what a What a last 45 minutes of the show that was. We'll tell you about the Raw show, Fallout from WrestleMania Backlash. Roman Reigns appears to be taking some time off this summer. What exactly that means, I don't know. What that means for the pay-per-view events, I don't know. But it looks like he's taking about 10 weeks off this summer, so we'll tell you about that. We've also got an update on the uh, the title unification match that's not going to happen with RK Bro and the Usos. We'll tell you about that. New Japan is running Strong Collision coming up on Sunday. And we have a lot of matches announced for that show, so we'll go over the lineup for that. Ted DiBiase, Sons Ted Jr., Brett DiBiase, all in trouble with the state. The state of Florida, Timmy have Tammy Sitch incarcerated prior to her trial. Of course, she was, uh, she was arrested, but then a quarter-million-dollar bond was posted, so she's out. They want to put her back in. And uh, we've got the ratings for SmackDown. We've got the ratings for Rampage, which, unsurprisingly, an all-time record low, given that the show aired at 2.30 Pacific. Suffice to say, I was not watching that show live. My child wasn't even out of school yet when Rampage aired. And, of course, the Raw Report and so much more. And, yes, when we come back from the break, I will talk for a moment, just a moment, about Lacey... Evans. If you're wondering why there was a video of Lacey Evans on Raw last night, well, we'll tell you all about that here today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Um, what are you doing here? Hey, listen. Listen, everybody. I thought you were quitting. I want, to, uh, I want to explain something to all of you very quickly, all right? I realize you watch this show and... You watch my uh, cameos, f4wonline.com on Cameo, and these wacky videos that we show here and all of that stuff, and you think, this, this bloke's a gimmick, okay? But let me tell you something. I'm actually not a gimmick, okay? <laughs> I, really, I really am not. And uh, I mentioned that I was going to talk about Lacey Evans, and of course, you know what everyone's expecting. I expected me to blow my stack and just like do a big rant and all that. Bro, I'm not a gimmick, okay? I can't just I can't just like force myself to do a rant. I didn't think I was gonna do a rant about Lacey Evans yesterday, but I did. I didn't know where it was going. And uh and I'm afraid to tell all of you that are expecting a big rant right now, you ain't gonna get it. Okay? I don't care. Like, I sincerely, I honestly, I don't care. I'm, I'm over Wait, it, okay? Well, see, can you understand why people may be a little surprised by that since you were on the well, verge of the, quitting yesterday? The point is, happened? I never know how I'm going to react to anything until it's in the moment, okay? And listen, maybe in the middle of this, I'm going to lose my mind, but I don't think so, okay? I'm over it. So, very quickly, last night on Raw, they aired the Lacey Evans video again. And I should, uh, I should backtrack slightly, okay? By explaining that, uh, you know, I talked about the Lacey Evans SmackDown thing and how the ring announcer said, you know, Lacey Evans requests you give her her due respect or whatever. And I was like, that had to be a mistake, okay? So on Raw last night, they they showed the video again of, of her telling her harrowing story. A story of addiction, death, and suicide, Okay. And they come back, and Corey Graves explains that, listen, you know, a lot of these characters are larger than life or whatever, but, you know, everything everything that she said is absolutely true. And, you know, they talked about her in glowing terms. She's, you know, she's gone through all of this, and she's still here, and she's, she's like a, a whatever, you know. And, and I watched it, and I was like, they're, what I thought, foolishly, of course, was they're totally backtracking on what happened on SmackDown because there was no hint of give her her proper respect or anything like that. They were just like, this is her true story. It's real. She's been through a lot. She's persevered. Like, she's someone that we can all look up to and all of this and that. And there was no nothing. 
So I thought, okay, well, they realized how stupid that was Friday and, you know, but I was wrong. So Lacey Evans is now a member of the WWE Raw roster. PW Insider reporting the reason the videos aired last night is because Evans has switched brands and is now on Raw. PW Insider noted that Evans is going to be a heel going forward. So it wasn't a mistake on SmackDown. Like when they when they had the ring announcer say, Lacey Evans asks that you show her the proper respect. A line that has been used for 30 years for heels in WWE. It wasn't a mistake. <laughs> they did all of that, and she's coming back as heel. So like, I'm not going to get mad. I, I got all out of my system yesterday. I don't care. And you know, you know the main reason I don't care? It's not my company, okay? I'm not the one that has to wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and know that this was my plan, okay? See, here's the thing. I just have one thing that I want to say, and that is that I know that I talk about NXT 2.0, and everybody makes fun of it, and they don't know why I watch it, and all this and that, okay? But the wrestling is bad. The storylines are preposterous, all that, okay? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they had Cameron Grimes do a promo a few weeks ago. And in real life, Cameron Grimes and his father were very close, and his father supported his wrestling career, like, from day one. And Cameron Grimes told a story about how his father was dying, and literally, in one of his last conversations with, with his father... He got to tell his father, bro, I signed with NXT, and I'm going to be a champion there someday. And then his dad died. His dad never got to see him become a champion in NXT. And Grimes is telling this emotional story, and he says, I'm going to go win that title at Stand and Deliver over WrestleMania weekend. And when they aired it, what did I say? I said, bro, there's no way he's not winning the title. You remember this? I said, there's no way. And of course, there was a way. He could have not won the title. But at the end of the day, I looked at that, and I looked at the story they told and the story of his and all of that. And I was like, bro, there's only one way to mess this up. Like, you're either absolutely beyond incompetent or you're a horrible person. These are the only two ways that he goes to the show and he doesn't win the title, okay? Well, you know what? He went to the show and he won. He went to the show... He vowed to win this championship for his father. And he did. They didn't screw it up. Because the wrestling sucks and the storylines are dumb and everything like that. But at the end of the day, like, the people that are there on a day to I know it's like, you know, Vince's call who gets pushed and everything. But, like, the people that are there on a day-to-day -day basis and everything like that, you know, they're, they're decent human beings. Well, now we've got the main roster. And there are many decent human beings that work on the main roster. But there's also a guy at the very top. And this guy at the very top, which who ironically, you know, came from the trailer park. But now he's a billionaire. And he has enough money to, like, support his family for generations. And he has yes men in his ears. And, you know, he's got his own gym that he can work at. He, you know, he's just like, he lives on another planet. And, and this guy, this guy came up with this idea. And he had Lacey Evans come out and tell this story of, and I hate to repeat this again because when people email me about this, they always put at the top, you know, possible trigger warning. She tells a story of abuse and death, suicide, drug overdoses, people dying in parking lots. She tells all of these stories. And it's all true. And they have an audience, a large audience, and there are people in the audience who have dealt with this same thing. They have people in the audience who have dealt with abuse, drug addiction, overdoses, suicide. And they did five weeks of this. And you can hear, I don't want to hear about crowd swinging, you can hear and you can see the fans standing up and showing respect for Lacey Evans. And they do, in fact, see her as a pretty special person. And the message is that for those of you out there who have lived a life 
similar to what Lacey Evans has lived. And you've you've gone through these same things and everything like that. You know, and she's someone that perhaps you could look up to. She's actually a horrible person. She's a bad person. That is the message. But again, it's not it's not my company. I, I, I don't book WWE. I don't have to look in the mirror. That guy does. So whatever. If that's what you want to do, fine. I, don't, I Honestly, I don't care. I'm over it. So that's my speech. I'm, I'm still, like, kind of gobsmacked because I thought, you know, there was, like, whatever. Who cares? But anyway, that's it. She's a heel. She is a bad person. This Lacey Evans character well. that you've been watching for five weeks, in storyline, she's a bad person. She's a heel. Why is she a bad person, though? Well, she's a heel. She's going to beat up the baby face. She's going to do all the stuff that heals. She's going to talk about it's a fan's fault. You didn't cheer me. You didn't stand up and respect me. Nah, I'm better than you. Blah, blah, there blah. There we go. That's why. Because it's got to be something with the fans. It's got to be something with the way society treated her after her mother and everything that happened with her moondog father and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be with the fans. Because just like Becky Lynch, just like Rhea Ripley last night, I think Zia Lee, did Zia Lee blame the fans? She was tired of shouldering the fans uh, and carrying them as she tried to be a warrior. So now she's looking out for self. Every time something happens, it's going to have to be about the fans. So that's how she'll be bad. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Um, hey, we got other news to talk about here today. You guys heard about Ibushi? Yeah. Okay, so listen. Something's going on with Ibushi. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Okay. So uh, here's the thing, though. Ibushi has been uh, he's been tweeting, okay, in Japanese, which is then being everyone's hitting the translate button, and now they've got this. They've crafted this entire story, and it doesn't help that uh, Dave made some sarcastic remark on the board that uh, a lot of people, including some people in New Japan, who were just baffled. I uh, didn't understand was sarcasm, okay? So I'm just going to give you what I have been told, and this is not from translated tweets, okay? This is this is from Ibushi's side. Let's just put it that way. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but this is the basic gist of the story. First off, Ghetto is the booker, okay? Can we get that out of the way first? He is not the worked gimmick, whatever Dave called him. So... uh Essentially, this appears to be the gist of the issue. You know how for years, um, you know, guys would would uh, work in New Japan shows, and every now and then, uh, you know, somebody would get injured, and they would miss a show. And what happened every time someone missed a New Japan show? There was always the assumption, bro, something must be bad, because people don't ever miss shows, right? How many years have we heard that? Forever. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, Abushi has gotten uh, a lot of injuries, and uh, in fact, he's been out of action with injuries, and if you, uh, if you watch uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are uh, walking wounded, okay? Remember how beat up Naito was for so long, and, you know, Tanahashi looks like he can barely move with his knees and everything like that, but in Japan, there's always been that deal where unless you're really hurt... You work, right? Well, apparently, uh, Ibushi is just like, he's done with it. And the 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 crux of the issue with Ibushi seems to be that uh, they, and I think he's he kind of said this in one of his weirdly translated tweets everyone's seen, but uh, he uh, has been asked to work when he does not feel like he's ready to work. And it's been ha it's happened many times where they've tried to get him to come back and he's got one injury or another. And apparently he just he snapped. I don't want to say he snapped, but like he's had enough and he's he's sick of it. And uh, he's come out publicly with this. And that appears to be the crux of the issue. Is he going to leave New Japan? I don't know. Uh, did he get really mad one night and start tweeting and now it's turned into something and, and he's regretting it did? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Is is he wanting to get out and he's sick of all of this? Maybe. Like, all, everything 
Everything other than what I just said is like, we'll see, okay? But absolutely, he is upset that they have tried to get him to come back early from injuries when he doesn't want to. And uh, and now he's going public with it, and he's he's not happy about it. So where this will all end up, I don't know. But that's what's going on with Ibushi. So in any of those translated tweets, uh, anything from your source about him uh, revealing all of the tea, I guess, here on, on Taka and these other, you know, things that have come out? Well, I mean, maybe there's other things he's really upset about, but uh, that's I, how he's going to go. I don't it. know. I don't know what he's going to do, what he's going to say. Scorched earth theory, Bro, you I guys, guess. You guys know anything about Ibushi? He's this, different. This bloke is a free spirit, okay? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, he also, he, much like me, I might add, he oh, ain't boy, a gimmick. You don't know what's going to come out when <laughs> with Ibushi. And uh, this is what came out today. And who knows what will come out tomorrow. Maybe he'll wake up tomorrow and he'll just be in a totally different mood. So that's that's the story with uh Yeah, well, with, with you, we know usually what's coming out when you open up your mouth. So, yep. What? Truth, Brian, truth. Well, of course you're going to get the truth. You'll always get the truth from me, one way or the other. I'm, I'm actually thinking about the uh, those uh, one of, one of my buddies today. He's such a gimmick. He does the he does his usual tweet about my God those rampage ratings, <laughs> and I, I immediately tweeted back like you're such a gimmick, dude. <laughs> of course, Rampage did a horrible number. And what's funny about it is we all knew going in. We all talked about it going in. It wasn't a surprise. Bro, I said if they come close to 400,000, they should throw a party. Because it aired at 2.30 on a Friday afternoon on the West Coast. My kid was doing <laughs> P.E. at the time. I would even picked her up from school yet. So, yes, Rampage, 292,000 viewers. Obviously, it did terrible. 18 to 49, point one one. Obviously, did terrible. Obviously, these are all of the worst numbers. But, uh, you know, what my buddy won't talk about is, you know this NBA that just smashes everybody and they just destroy everybody, and they were the reason that, that Rampage got... You know all that? The, how well the NBA does, the NBA playoffs? Mm -hmm. There was an NBA game in the Rampage time slot, and it did about what Rampage does. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you, for everybody freaking out about Rampage numbers for the last five months or whatever, yeah, Friday at 10 is not ideal. <laughs> hey, you know who's not freaking out about this, and you know who doesn't care? The networks. And you know what? AEW's still getting paid the same way that SmackDown and WWE will still get paid when they have to move that to FS1 again. And those ratings stink, and then everybody who's on the AEW side will point and laugh, and it's, you know... At the end of the day, who cares? <laughs> if you're a fan that's really fighting this battle, and it always seems to be the stand-up for WWE types that do it more and do it with more ferocity, but it's just so completely ridiculous. Again, this thing aired at 5.30 on the East Coast, 2.30 on the West Coast. What was it, 12.30 in Hawaii? Whatever it was, doesn't matter. Who cares? The only people that are really fighting and talking about this are the wrestling fans that all either watched it or were never going to watch it anyway. Alrighty, SmackDown. How did SmackDown do? Well, uh, where's my SmackDown? I got so much news I can't get in here today because I <laughs> talked too long about Lacey Evans. 1.998 million viewers. Dude, do it like Excalibur then. Do the whole rest of the show in fast motion. Go ahead. No, you know, when 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 uh, Excalibur made that comment on, on Twitter about how, I think it was Vinny that said perhaps it was pre-taped and sped up. It might have been me. I was obviously joking, hmm. but uh, I never took any of this out on Excalibur. It's not his fault. That's his job. His boss told him, I need you to do 11 matches in 46 seconds or whatever, and he did it. So, that ain't baby. his fault. I'm very impressed. And, and also, you know. yes, what? I tried. I tried to do it as fast as he did, and I couldn't. I am impressed with his ability to spout out 11 matches in 46 seconds. It's impressive. Should they you know, do it? No. And well, in fact, know, after that, they stopped. You know who should give him props and all that is Tony Schiavone. 
Because yeah, I don't know if you remember this since you were such a WWE fan, but on those old World Championship wrestlings, they would have the go around of everywhere the NWA was going on tour. And granted, he had a lot more time to do it, but he had to flawlessly go through for that minute long and actually cut promos on every way they were going to be. In Allentown, Pennsylvania on Saturday, January 20th, in Baltimore, Maryland, on, and just go down with a couple people who were on the card, maybe how to get tickets, and then boom. I was very impressed by the way Tony Schiavone always did that. And if he gave props to Excalibur, that's the way it should be for that. Unless they just sped him up, which is also possible. All right. We also have a couple of notes from last night's Observer Radio. So Roman Reigns has been pulled from all advertising for 10 weeks starting in June. Although uh, Dave seemed to indicate, well, he said this. He's been pulled from TVs and house shows, but they have not pulled the advertising from pay-per-views. Now, if you know anything about WWE, this means nothing, okay? (laughs) They will happily false advertise Roman Reigns to sell out stadiums and then not have him there. And uh, that's just a fact. They've done it a thousand times. I mean, they'll just advertise whatever they want. Which brings us, by the way, to when they advertised for three weeks that they were going to do a tag team unification match at WrestleMania Backlash. Sold a whole bunch of tickets, and it was blatant false advertising. They just didn't do the match. Well, they teased doing the match again on Raw last night. And uh, the Usos are going to show up on on SmackDown on Friday to continue the storyline. And uh, plans... Can change, okay, because they do all the time. But as of Monday, they have every intention of doing the match, but not unifying the titles. So uh, there you go. Congratulations to Roman for being able to go on vacation. Who cares? Uninterrupted. I don't care. What's the matter? (laughs) Nothing. It's just like. What are, you, what are you not caring I, the, about? The, you just read a story, and now you're saying you don't care? I don't care that they're advertising a match, and they've decided they're not actually going to give you what's advertised. Huh. I should. The thing that kind of irritates me is I should care, but I don't. You broken man. I am. You are. I am broken. Yeah, hardened to this game now. I wouldn't say you down this hardened. Ted DiBiase, sons Ted Jr. and Brett, sued by the state of Mississippi. State seeks to reclaim $24 million of misused federal funds meant for welfare. Ted DiBiase, uh, owes, Ted DiBiase Sr., the million-dollar man, owes, thank goodness he's a million-dollar man. He owes $1.9 million. Ted DiBiase Jr. owes $2.897 million. Brett DiBiase, 824000 Others named in the lawsuit include football stars Brett Favre, Paul Acosta, and Marcus Dupree. <laughs> Back with the Raw Report and more Observer Live. Um, we're going to talk Raw here in a moment, but first, a couple of notes. Landstorm Live Q&A this afternoon, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. We do this once a month. Lance will answer any of your questions, whatever you want. <laughs> Ask him about American Breakfast. Lance, Lance, any of your damn questions, whatever you want. (laughs) Here's how it works. It's at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, so about an hour after Observer Live ends. Twitch.tv slash F4W video. Video Video.f4wonline.com. It will air live on all video platforms. For subscribers, if you are not a Twitch subscriber, if you're on Twitch for free, bruh, what are you not signed up for? It's free if you have Amazon Prime. Apparently, less of you have Amazon Prime now than during the pandemic. But for those of you that do, you have a free Twitch subscription that you did not know about with your Amazon Prime. So you go up to uh, twitch.tv slash F4W video and uh, you go to subscribe and it offers to uh, it offers to uh, have you use your Prime account and you use that and you can sign up and it's free. <laughs> I'm laughing because I said bruh and then someone in the... Uh, chat wrote it and it made me laugh because uh now paisley says it which is the funniest thing when she'll be talking about something and she'll just add bruh so anyway the other thing i want to mention was do you realize you did it earlier on when you were talking about cameron grimes saying like bruh dad i got signed like yes he's on his deathbed i don't think he called his dad bruh (laughs) yeah dude i don't know maybe he did (laughs) Uh, we don't know (laughs) we don't of all the things to get mad about and then someone else here says what uh, What's with America not caring about false advertising? You don't get it, dude. 
America does care about false advertising. America is not WWE. WWE fans, they don't care about false advertising. Too much of America is just like Stand WWE. Up. It doesn't make a goddamn bit of sense. Stand up for WWE. <laughs> I was talking to somebody a week ago. I mentioned it on this show. And they were like, you notice that fans don't hijack WWE shows anymore? And their theory was, all those fans that used to throw beach balls and hijack the shows... They just started watching AEW, and they just quit WWE. And it's funny, because if you watch WWE, I mean, they they have heels. Like, Seth Rollins is out there leading people in this music, and they're all singing. And then, you know, they'll they'll have uh, the ring announcer go, stand up and show Lacey Evans a proper respect. And they all stand up, and they do what they're told. I mean, they're, this is total stand-up for WWE. And uh, this stand-up for WWE crowd... Bro, they don't care about false advertising. You advertise a match and don't deliver, and they'll defend it. They'll defend. Like, if you're a fan of of uh, Roman Reigns, and there's, like, tickets for a stadium show, and they're, like, $500 or whatever for your family, and your family, like, they all love Roman, and you pay your $500, your hard-earned money, and you buy tickets for the show, and they advertise Roman in the main event, and then you go, and he's not there... And, like, your kids are crying, and your wife's like, where's that hot guy with the long hair? You know what they do? They go, card subject to change, sweetheart. Oh, baby, I'm sorry he's not here, but card subject to change. It's okay that he's not here. That's what they do! But, like, every other place in this country, like, they don't false advertise. If they advertise somebody, they have every intention of having him be there. Anyway. Should I talk about Raw? Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Raw was funny because, you know, as Dave noted last night, everyone leaves. They, they turn off the show at 10.15. So I guess WWE had this plan. We're going to put Cody on in a title match at 10. We're going to try and stop the slide. Well, to cut to the chase, they started at 10. It was a 13-minute match. And then the last 45 minutes was like they threw in the towel. So I don't know what their plan was. They didn't have one as usual. All right, so uh, RK Bro opened up the show. And they're still teasing this uh, this unification match, which, by the way, they advertised for three weeks and didn't deliver. But, brother, stand up for WWE. Card subject to change. So now they're saying, hey, we're going to go to SmackDown and talk about it. And this led to Orton and Riddle versus the Street Profits for the tag team titles. And they had a very good 10-minute match. And at the end, uh, actually before the end, Riddle goes for a dive, and he accidentally hit Randy. This is the first time this has happened. It is way too early to break them up. But after this past week, I fully intend or I fully expect them to break them up next week. What? Because they're completely wait. incompetent. Wait, wait. He also finished him with an RKO as Montez was jumping off the ropes and Randy was really happy. And, and Riddle had that face where he was like more turned, you know, tuned in than ever before to being just like Randy. Yes. You, they, they can't be doing that. Well, Actually, no. I, what are you talking about? Mind. You're going to be right. that guy now? No, I can't. You're I right. mean, I, I can I can see it already. Randy's jealous and he's using his move and winning matches and he turns on him. What like, about that swerve, though, that Riddle turns on Randy? Dude, it doesn't matter. The point is. As I was once told by the great Buddy Wayne, my trainer, the father of Nick Wayne, who in a decade may be the best worker on the planet, when it's time. That's when you do anything in wrestling. When it's time. And you know what it's not time for right now? Set. These two to break up. It's true. So I'm sure at this point that they're going to be breaking up imminently <laughs> and probably having a match at Hell in a Cell. We had a Kevin Patrick interview with Theory. No, I wasn't upset about it. I was merely pointing out, everybody, that they have now brought back the platform that they used in 1993 on WWF Superstars of Wrestling, where the guy interviews the guy on the platform with all the fans in the background. I was dying. Let's just go back to everything that Pritchard and Vince were doing in 1993. 2003. 2013. That was almost 30 years ago. Judgment Day comes out. It's Edge, Rhea Ripley, and Damian Priest. Edge cut all his hair off. I don't know if you've seen Edge of late, but his hair is like so dry that it like sticks out like uh, uh, you know Doc from Back to the Future. So you know he decided to shave the sides and just leave the top kind of long, and he slicked it back. Looked a thousand times better. 
until he got into a brawl, and then it stuck straight up like uh, like Sheamus. But anyway, it is an improvement. And they did their promo, and this led to uh, Rhea. You know, she don't like the fans. Can you believe it? And so then we had Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan, which uh, involved Rhea Ripley giving her, like, the hardest kick to the head I've seen since the last time I watched a UFC pay-per-view. And I thought Liv was dead. And Rhea's supposed to stay in character, but she looked so sad to have killed poor Liv. And then she beat the hell out of her, and she submitted her. And then she put her in the hold again afterwards. And then out came Finn Balor and uh, AJ Styles to make the save, which led to Finn Balor and Damian Priest. They went four minutes, and Edge just ran in and speared him for the disqualification. Keep track of those, by the way. They didn't make the save. They just came out because their music hit, and they walked down to the ring. That's how they go to commercial now. Yeah. So next week, we're going to have a DNA test with Ezekiel and Elias. And uh, this this was the show where I figured it out. I figured out this whole Ezekiel thing. I've hated it from day one, and now I think I've figured it out. And if I'm right, this is going to be the storyline of the year. They have to. I realize I use that term a lot, and I'm proven wrong, but they have to have shot a whole bunch of footage with Elias before he shaved and cut his hair. Brian, I brought this up to you a long time ago. I know, and but I, it just, went one ear and one, it went, and one ear and out another. Because we come up, here's the thing, Mike, we come up with all sorts of ideas and fantasy booking, and it's just all total whatever, BS, something stupid. But man, when he, when, when Ezekiel's in the ring and he goes, maybe my brother should just come out and play you a song. And that's when it, all, it just hit me. It was like, oh my God, they've done a bunch of pre-tapes and it's going to be awesome. So I think that this is going to work. You I do. Why I have hope? I have hope because Kevin Owens is involved. Kevin can make That's anything work. Yes, he can make anything work. He, he can make yell. Kevin Owens work. He can <laughs> yell back and forth in a pre-tape, and it's going to be awesome. Yes. And what's what? What they really need to do is not just pre-tapes on the screen and stuff like that, but they need to do a false count anywhere match where he brawls backstage. E- Ezekiel gets laid out, and all of a sudden, Elias shows up, and he's he's beaten up Kevin Owens. Oh, the strum of the guitar first, just so Kevin Owens can look he's over. He's got to hit like... him with the guitar and <laughs> run off. And then, you know, you see Kevin covered in guitar pieces, and then Ezekiel runs in and pins him. Dude, it'd be awesome. Go with me on this. This one. We had an Omos in the MVP VIP lounge, and, and Cedric still wants in, and Lashley came out and beat him up, and... Nobody cared about any of this. Sonya Deville is no longer a whatever. She's been stripped of her duties as a backstage management type. She's now only a wrestler after losing a match where she could never wrestle again. And uh, her mystery opponent was the returning Alexa Bliss. And Alexa came out. She still has a doll. And uh, they do a half and half thing with the music. But she is back as Alexa the Wrestler. She wears her wrestling gear. They play her wrestler music. She does wrestling moves. Thank God. Thank God. All that rigmarole for a gimmick that sucked and led to her being taken off TV and put out of WrestleMania. And their new brilliant idea is, maybe we should just let her be a wrestler. And guess what? She was over. And she won with the Twisted Bliss in 40 seconds. Everybody was happy. So then we had uh, the Kevin Owens-Elias segment. And then we had a segment with uh, Becky Lynch and Asuka. This Becky character, I'm just... uh, This is another one I'm just totally over. It's like, whatever. Veer Mahan beat Frank Lohman, who was the star of the show. Go back and watch old Frank Lohman. They need to team this guy up with that one... uh, I forget her name. She's got a new name anyway, so it doesn't matter. But she's in NXT, and like everything she did was like over the top, and she would sell wacky and goofy facial looks for the whole nine yards. Her and Frank would be the most incredible team in all of WWE. Two total gimmicks, and I howled watching this segment. Cody versus Theory. They had him go 13 minutes, and then uh, Seth Rollins just ran in for the DQ because that's what they do. And he beat up Cody, and he gave him the curb stomp on the table. And yes, they're going to do another 
Cody-Seth Rollins match. Will they beat Seth Rollins three straight times, which they never do with a top star? Or are they going to just screw it all up and beat Cody? I actually have faith, but I shouldn't. Then we had uh, Sasha and Naomi beating Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. Last week, Dewdrop said, hey, Nikki, are you sick of this stupidity? Like, you ready to be serious? Nikki nodded. She came out as Nikki Ash in the superhero costume, did all the same gimmick. But after getting beaten, Dewdrop did chastise her again and tell her it's time to stop doing this stupidity. So I think they will unmask and rename Nikki Ash. <laughs> A slow build. Chubba beat Mustafa Ali. So uh, Sonya was removed from power because she was abusing her power. And then Miz just comes out as referee for an Ali match. And there's no explanation as to why. There's no explanation as to who allowed it. It just made absolutely zero sense. So he's the referee. He won't count for Ali. He fast counts when Ciampa makes a cover. He screws Ali. Will there be any repercussions? Uh, seriously, everybody. Had the Lacey Evans video. And then we had... Uh, literally, there, were, there, there was enough time for Bianca and Asuka to do a 14-minute match in the main event. But instead... We had a 24-7 segment where they're trying to serve papers to the grooms. They want divorces, the women. We had entrance, commercial, entrance, entrance. And by the time the match started, they had three minutes, Bianca versus Asuka, and Becky ran in for the DQ. Back in a moment, Observer Live here first off youtube subscribers twitch subscribers lance storm to pacific five eastern today and if you are not signed up for our youtube channel where you get observer live and figure four daily filthy four daily uh brian and Vinny show i recommend signing up now video.f4wonline.com click that join button and sign up so you can watch the videos because circling back to lacey evans Filthy Tom Lawler did not listen to yesterday's Observer Live. He did not hear my rant about Lacey. Mm. And so when we did Filthy Ford Daily an hour later, and I, I brought the comment by the ring announcer up to him, he, uh, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't even begin to wrap his brain around it. And do you know what he said? What did he say? He said if Lacey Evans did five weeks of vignettes in order to be a heel. I will eat my shoe. That's what he said. He said he would eat his shoe if it turns out she's a heel. Well, looks like she's a heel. And I have been in communication with Tom. And uh, he's a man of his word. He is going to eat a shoe <laughs> as soon as she debuts as a heel. Well. So, video.f4wonline.com. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know what preparations he's making, but he said it, and he's going to do it. So, maybe maybe she was going to be a baby face, but, like, they heard that, and, you know, Vince wants to take out the strong openweight champion, and so, change of plans. Anyway, we're out of time. I want to thank you all for listening here today. Mike, as always, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. All the decent human beings on this planet. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.